the quarterly payment was a dollar and some All interest. Right. This morning we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. And uh, we're going to continue there. Uh, I thought we kind of got into it last week, but I don't think we did. Uh, we may have. But uh, anyway, uh, we're going to continue there. On first you take paid meals between that and it too. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. No, what he does is he's getting, reading ahead. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> reading ahead, and then I, then it requires you to come back and reread read what you've already read. And sometimes teachers and preachers forget that we're supposed to go back and reread read <laughs> because we're in the hard hitting good. Right, right. Just, absolutely. Preaching, just preaching. I got, I got Mary asking me some good questions. So, mm -hmm. all right, that's really First Samuel chapter twenty-four. Absolutely. Uh, it says, <laughs> verse one. It says, "Now it happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi.' Then Saul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats." So he came to the ship, uh, sheepfolds by the road where the the uh, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend to his needs. And David and his men were staying in the recess of the cave. And when the men of David said to him, "This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, and that you may do to him as it seems good to you." And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my, my master, the Lord is the anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with these words and did not allow them to arise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. So David also arose and afterward went out of the cave and called to, out to Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when the, Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, Indeed, David seeks your harm? Look this day, your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you. But my eyes spared you, and I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, see, uh, yes, he see the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Now. Uh, well, no, and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you. Yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancient says, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore, let the Lord be judge, and judge between you and me, and see and plead my case, and deliver me out of the out of your hand. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, so what's what do we see happening here? Okay. So Saul and his men are traveling along and looking for David and what, just like any guys in the service, we always have to do what? Had the ambush. Mm -hmm. Had the ambush set up and yeah. ready to take them out. Uh-huh. And uh, what what did we see that Saul had to do? He had to use, he had to use restroom, right? And uh, so he went off in this cave more than likely by himself, right? So he was vulnerable, right? So what do you think God was doing here with David? Testing him. He was yeah, testing him, right? Yeah. He was testing him. Definitely was. <clears throat> it says, when Saul had returned from following the Philistines in the previous chapter, God miraculously delivers David by drawing Saul away 
to fight the Philistines at the moment Saul was ready to capture David. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Over in Gaal, right? Mm -hmm. It says, but when Saul was done with the Philistines, he went back to pursuing David. And we often wish that our next victory would be a permanent victory. I said, we, he says, we wish that spiritual enemies who pursue us like Saul pursue David would simply just give up and would just go on and bother someone else, right? But even when we have a victory and they're sent away, they come back and we will and we will keep coming back until we go to glory with the Lord. Uh, so, uh, and when we get our permanent victory, but you see that Saul was relentless, right? He was relentless seeking after David. Uh, says the wilderness of En Gedi, uh, En Gedi was a canyon that runs westward from the Dead Sea. Says one can still see the good sized creek following down the canyon, making En Gedi with its waterfalls and vegetation, some more like a tropical paradise than the middle of the desert. One can also see the numerous caves dotting the hills uh, this was a great place for David and his men to hide out in the middle of the barren desert, and scouts could easily see troops approaching. Uh, there was plenty of water and wildlife and many caves in defensive positions. In other words, just like Roger said, great spot for ambushes, right? You can see the enemy coming. You can get them in a the kill zone. You can set up something that, uh, just like David had, had Saul. It's just like uh, his men were telling David. Today, the Lord has allowed your enemy to step right to where you want him, right? Mm -hmm. It says, uh, over here, when it talks about uh, David and his men, you know, were uh, in the recess of the caves and stuff. So they were they were in some pretty dark spots, right? Where you couldn't see him. He walked in there, relieved himself, and just thought he was in there by himself, right? Says, uh, says this is uh, a euphemism for having a bowel movement uh, where he, you know, he talks about attending to his needs. Uh, as a person uh, would crouch with his inner garment <coughs> dropped to his feet. In other words, if you've ever been over into the uh, Middle East, you'll see a lot of people, they'll just, they'll be squatting. Okay, a lot of times they can be just sitting there or they could be defecating. They could be doing something else, right? So you never know, uh, and this was this was uh, their culture. This is what they did. Okay. So uh, with his uh, being in that position and everything, with all that cloth laying around him, he probably never would have felt David cutting off that cloth. You know, it would have been all gathered up there on the floor. He would have just simply just cut off a piece of it, and you know, again, God's test. You know, do you take this man's life or, mm -hmm. you know. It says David's heart troubled him. You know, it talks about mm -hmm. uh, David's heart when it, whenever he uh, cut off part of Saul's robe. It, it troubled him. What are they talking about there? Well, he, he still respected him as a king and no. probably still loved him as a brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. He had never turned his hand against Saul. Had he? Even though... Uh, David had uh, Saul throw spears at him and all kinds of stuff, right? Tried to kill him on several numerous times. He had never raised his hand up against Saul because the king was the Lord's anointed. Okay? So it says, uh, David recognized that the Lord uh, himself had placed Saul in this kingship. Thus the judgment and removal of Saul had to be left to the Lord, not him, right? Mm -hmm. Quick cut in. Does anybody still need the first uh, study guide for our Wednesday night? Oh, I do. Okay, anyone else? I have one. I have one. <coughs> you want one? Okay, I'm going to have to make a couple more. But... <coughs> carry on, carry on. <laughs> Continuing on there, it says, Saul no, unknowingly comes to the cave where David and his men were hiding, right? Yeah. It says, this indicates that it was a large cave big enough to shelter a flock of sheep. All of most of David's men, which were 600 men. So that had been a pretty big cave for them to be in the recesses of the caves, right? It had to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and, okay. and I know uh, Brother Terry's been in some caves. I've seen some pictures. Of, Ooh, man. And, and they can get some pretty crazy looking hiding spots in there, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
That well, you know what? You know what's because uh, we were in the concert and just think how much, how long all of that was in darkness, and but then it took the light to show the view. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it was because uh, they turned the lights off during part of the concert and uh, had people sitting around and stuff, but kind of like for the day, and I'm thinking, this is not near as good as when the lights are on. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> it just like he created all that beauty in the dark. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Since Saul went to attend to his needs, it says since the Bible is a real book dealing with real people living in real lives, we aren't surprised to see it describes Saul's attentions uh, by God without Saul having any knowledge of God's timing or arrangement of things. Uh, so you see, just it's kind of funny how Saul and them went by this this cave. Just so happens to be the cave that David and his men are hiding in, and it just so happens he's just, he, he's over there going, "Ooh, ooh, I gotta go, I gotta go." So he's gonna run off in the cave, right? The very same cave that God had allowed David and his men to hide out in. Do you think it was coincidence? No. 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 I think it was part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It says, uh, in fact, that Saul went to attend to his needs also meant that we that he went into the cave alone. The soldiers and bodyguards were out of the cave waiting on him. Since David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave, uh, and uh, it says, what are the chances that Saul must attend to his personal needs at the very time that they passed the very cave that David hides in? And this was no coincidence, by, but arranged by God to test David, to train David, and to display David's godly heart. Do you guys agree with that statement? I agree as we go through trials and tribulations. Uh, at the same time we go through trials and tribulations, we're going to be tempted and we're going to be tested. And God uses that to let us spiritually grow at one end, but at the same other end, it's for us to learn or to know that there is that God gives us a back door to go to accept that back door it when we're tempted. It grows in our faith, our spiritual right. faith. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the main thing we need to look at. So yeah. when, when we talked about uh, when they were in there in the cave and everything, uh, David's men told him what? Anybody tell me? What's that? Yeah, What's that? You, you got it. You got it. You got, you got him right there. there. Yeah, kill him, kill him. You know? Went letter by letter. Yep, absolutely. Since David's men were excited about the opportunity, uh, they believed that this was what? Attempt. No, it was a gift from God. Like, yeah, hey, but, uh, hello, this is a you know, a perfect yeah. opportunity. It's a gift. He's done put Saul right in your hands, David. Go ahead. Yeah, but David's like, I was told not to harm him. Yes. Absolutely. It was a test. So that would be about the worst way to go though. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would be. <laughs> says they knew it was no coincidence that Saul came alone into the cave at that moment. Says they thought this was an opportunity from God to kill Saul. Apparently, on some previous occasions, God promised David. Says God, it says, uh, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hands that you may do to him as it seems good to you. Notice what he says there. As it seems good to you. He, so he's leaving the choice all up to David, right? What's that? Free will. What's that? Ash? Free will. Free will. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Free will. It, it, it's, God leaves the choice up to us, doesn't he? To make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, the men said to him, uh, you know, that they were excited about it. It's like, hey, it's a gift from God. Go ahead and use it. You know, go ahead and take it. But... Uh, so David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Says we can imagine David listening to his counsel from his men and, and with his sword creeping quickly towards Saul, covered by the darkness of the cave. David's men are excited. Their lives as fugitives are about to end, and they will soon be ins installed as friends and associates of the new king of Israel. But as David came close to Saul and put forth his sword, he didn't bring it crashing down on, on Saul's neck or thrust it through his back. Instead, he secretly cut off the corner of his robe. Mm -hmm. Says some wonder 
uh, how David could have done this without being uh, detected. Well, Saul may have laid his robe down in one part of the cave and attended to his knees in another part, so David did not have to get right next to Saul to cut off the corner of his robe. Or it may also be that there was enough noise and commotion from the thousands of men outside of the cave, along with our horses, that David was simply undetectable because of the noise. And you guys, if you've ever been in a cave, you know that sound echoes. Oh, oh yeah. Sound in there yeah. Being heard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this point of time, <coughs> using every advantage that you have to do your job. Yes. I'm not up for hiding. It said, you know, when we talk about David's heart was troubled, why do you think David's heart was troubled? Because he didn't understand why Saul was trying to kill him. Okay. What else? Well, and he, uh, his men wanted him to do one thing, but his inner being his heart. with God yeah. was don't want to do, not do that. Right. He no, had no. a heart, uh, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. So David had compassion and love towards Saul. And he knew that Saul was the anointed and he did not want to throw his uh, hands up against Saul right. due to the fact that he knew that God had appointed him as king. Uh, it said, uh, you know, he had a conscience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it says well, David. Also, David had been told that he was going to be king. King, yeah. And so he knew. He didn't have. Somehow a, God was going to get him through this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, Terry. A valid point made. Very, very it says, this is remarkable, uh, remarkably tender conscience in David. Many would have only been, uh, be troubled that they did not take the opportunity to kill Saul, but David only cut off the corner of Saul's robe. It says, yet his heart was troubled. Why? Because the robe was the symbol of Saul's royal authority, and David felt bad. Yeah, just from cutting off the corner just, of his robe. Absolutely. Because Saul was king, the anointed king, mm -hmm. by God, who, you know, David loves him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure that this, was some, this wasn't just a regular everyday man robe this was some kind of ornate yeah. 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 really decked out fancy robe or something absolutely it says rightly so according to the heart of god it says that he had done any he had see that he had done anything against saul's god's appointed authority david expresses this when he said the lord forbid that i should do this thing to my master the lord's anointed seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. David knew better than anyone that Saul was troubled and a corrupt leader, yet it was in God's power to take him away, and David would not do that, uh, do what was the only thing that the Lord could do. Again, just what Terry was talking about. You know, just like Brother Terry said, you know, David knew that he would be king. God said, you know, made it known that he would be king, but he was not going to, uh, you know, do it himself. He was going to let God's plan work out. You know, a it lot of times we try to get ahead of God, don't we? You know, our plan, we think our plan's a lot better than God's plan, and we try to get ahead of God. Yep. Right? He wasn't uh, going to take a life in the process knowing that God had it under control, that if he gave God the ability to handle it and give him the strength, then he would persevere and go forward and not have to worry about that, that God had it. So David appeals to Saul, right? As uh, as Saul goes out the cave, what does David do? <laughs> he makes himself known that he's, yes, he does. he's in the cave, right? Mm -hmm. And he could have killed him. He makes himself known. He's like, you know, uh, either this is going to be the end or this is going to be the beginning because, you know, uh, he makes himself known to the king. Yes, you know, here I am all this time running and uh, escaping from Saul, and he turns himself in and says, hey, here I am. He makes an appeal to Saul. It says right here on uh, verse 8, right there, it says, David also arose afterward, went out of the cave, and called out to Saul, saying, my lord, the king. 
And when Saul looked behind him, David stood with his face to the earth and bowed down. Why do you think David did that? Because he was a, he was a Sir. anointed king. He yeah, was, was a king. king yeah. It was showing him was respect, right? right? He was. David. It says David went out of the cave. David took a big chance here because he could have simply just remained in the cave and hiding, uh, securing the fact that Saul had not found him. Uh, but he surrendered himself to Saul because he saw the opportunity to show Saul his heart towards him and reconcile their differences, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so we see right here that David is understanding. Uh, he's seeing that uh, what God's plan is for him, right? No. And he takes advantage of the situation and uses uh, this opportunity to show Saul what his heart's all about. It's an opening in the door that he can uh, speak on behalf of God through him, letting you know, him know how he feels. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, right there, when David speaks to Saul, uh, what does he tell him? What does he tell him? So that God's going to make a decision, whether you or me. Between him, between <clears throat> you and me, right? It says up here, let God be, let the Lord be the judge between you and me, and let the Lord defend me on you, avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you, as the proverb of the ancient says, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. What is what is David's speech all about there? That he's got he's trusting the Lord to do it. He's, he's trusting, trusting the Lord to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. He's giving it he's giving it all over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord to be the judge, the Lord to trust, you know, he's putting his trust in the Lord that Saul will see his true intentions of his heart. Because if he could if he uh, wanted to have killed him, then he he could have done it. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh so Says, some might have said David lay it on the, all on the line tell it like it is and David will and to some extent but even as he does he will show mercy and kindness to Saul alright so David shows mercy and kindness here okay well, what does he mean right there like a dead or it says talking about a dead dog and a, you know it says after whom has the king of Israel come out whom do you pursue? A dead dog or a flea? Therefore let the Lord judge and judge between you and me and see and plead my case and deliver me out of your hands. So what is, what is he using that even as before? Um, uh, he's, he's comparing himself to the flea. Yes. Why are you doing all this just for me? Yeah, absolutely. Bring in three thousand people. As low as lowly as I am, I, absolutely as lowly as I am. It says David hereby expresses his lowliness and entire com committal of his uh, of his calls to God, who alone is the judge and to whom alone uh, belongs vengeance. In other words, that's just like uh, Louis said. Mm -hmm. You know. He's showing his lowliness towards the king. The king has 3,000 people. And he's the king of Israel. And yet, he, he was obsessed with David. A servant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He, was, he had an obsession. And it's like uh, Mary and I talked about this morning. Uh, do you think that obsession was because of the way Saul was? Or do you think it was because of the spirit that God chose to put upon Saul? Saul's jealousy because jealousy. the people loved David more than they loved him and respected David more than they did him. They sang songs, right? David's uh, Saul's thousands, but David's ten thousands, right? No, so, that like didn't change it. It's all Saul's pride. Yeah, right. That mm -hmm. didn't mean though that the people were more in favor of David than no. Saul. It no. was a warrior song. A warrior Saul song. was king, and yeah. David was his man. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, where else? Where else do we see that in the Bible? Say, in, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Beginning. In the beginning. And just about every king of Israel after. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, what what is Saul's reaction here? 
We were down what on 16? 16. Is that where we stopped off, you guys? 16. 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much right now in awe, but I read ahead, so I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's like uh, Brother Terry said, right now Saul's like, he's like an absolute shock, right? Like, wow. I was, I was just in there. Bad. I could have died here. You know, my nemesis is my my enemy, the one that I've been tra tracking, trying to track for years and kill and kill. And he actually let me live. You know, he could have could have uh, killed me and did not. So uh, start up right there at uh, 16. It says, so it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul that Saul said, is this your voice, my son, David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dwelt well with me. For the Lord, for when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Therefore, swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that, will, and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. So David swore to Saul and Saul went home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. Okay. Wow. So, after all these years, came down to one moment, didn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever been in that situation where you, you know, you talk to somebody or haven't talked to somebody and it all came down to just one conversation? One moment? I've done it with a bully. He did it with a bullet. Yeah. yeah. He, did, he had me pinned up. He had me pinned up against the wall. Turn around, pin him up against the wall, and and just sat there and talked to him. I told him how it was, and the gym teacher come by and said, "Go for you, good for you." People at the office said, "Good for you." Didn't lay Absolutely. didn't lay a hand on him. Absolutely. Saul's reaction to David. <coughs> Can anybody tell me what was Saul's reaction? Oh, David. He, Saul's reaction to David there at the end. Humbled. Yeah. He was right. humbled, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Was he repentant or just remorseful? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question, yeah. It says it uh, Saul responded so emotionally because Saul uh, lived on the delusion that David was out to get him, and David's refusal to kill Saul when he had his love, uh, his chance proved beyond doubt that it was false. And David's obedience to God and his love for Saul made all the difference in the softening of Saul's heart. So it did soften Saul's heart to a degree, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, Saul said what? There he says, Saul says, you are more righteous than I. You have dwelt with me uh, good. You know, you, will, you, you did not kill me. The Lord reward you with good for what you have done to this day. I says this was a this was a pretty dramatic change in Saul's heart, wasn't it? Yeah, because he said that all I've done with you is evil. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It says because uh, uh, this was it says even uh, change David uh, every change David uh, could have hoped for uh, in Saul was uh, has happened, and Saul uh, really seemed sincere about it says uh, Saul lifted up his voice and wept. says David uh, heaped coals of kindness upon Saul's head and it melted Saul's heart. You know? Mm -hmm. For a time. For a time, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. It is. Turn the next chapter. Turn the next chapter. Turn the page. Yeah. yeah. It's Abigail, isn't it? Yeah, it starts talking about his wives and stuff, yeah. Yeah. He had another one at that time, too. But it says uh, Saul looks towards the future, right? Uh, on 20 and 22, uh, right there, verse 20, it says, and, 
And now uh, I know indeed that you shall surely be king and that you shall, uh, that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Uh, therefore swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. So David swore to, to Saul and Saul went home. So he was looking towards the future, even though, you know. Well, that was an easy covenant for David to make because he had already made it with yeah. Jonathan. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that he would take care of his descendants. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, in the previous chapter, uh, Jonathan and David made a covenant together. Mm -hmm. You know, because because uh, Jonathan went out to strengthen David's uh, spirit at that time because David was down in the dumps about what was going on and uh, Jonathan told him surely you will be king you know <coughs> uh, was the people the people the people wanted to be king and God just gave I just gave them their king and they found out it was wrong right mm -hmm. absolutely it says, uh, many times a person represents and claims to recognize their sinful ways, just like Saul did. But the validity of repentance and a changed heart isn't demonstrated by the emotions or sincerity of the moment. It is demonstrated by the ongoing direction of one's life. And David had every right to say, I'm going to stay in the stronghold until I see the direction of Saul's life. Because we notice that David did what? At the very end, it says that, that Saul went home and David went where? The stronghold. He went up to the stronghold. He went up to the stronghold again for what one reason and one reason only, right? Mm -hmm. To see, like Brother Rick was saying just a few minutes ago, was it true repentance or was it just a soft heart for a time being and a moment, you know? Have you ever had somebody say, you know, I forgive you, and then the next minute after you make them mad again, uh, they're already back on what you did the last time? The last time, mm -hmm. yeah. What was it kind of snaggy? Yes, absolutely. It says, what a miserable picture Saul is. It says, what is the use of saying, I played the fool, if he goes to playing the fool? What use are his tears and confession before David if he doesn't act upon his remorse? You know, it's, it's said that he lifted yeah. his face towards the Lord and he wept whenever he talked to David. But again, is it just something that was just said and played out in that moment? And we'll find out in the future uh, chapters here. So has anybody got any questions about this uh, chapter 24? What we went over? Pretty good chat. Uh, what would you have done in that situation if the guy had been hunting you that long? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, it, yeah. it goes to goes to show. And, and uh, you know, in, depending on the situation and everything, you know, you always uh, want to go to the Lord first. And uh, that's that's a lot right. of faith that he was right there. He could have ended all of his troubles. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And his men's. Yeah. You know, he should take mm -hmm. care of his men's problems. His men would would have been, you know, uh, jubilant because, you know, he had victory over Saul. Uh, but David, uh, he chose to, you know, to follow the Lord and not his own, his own vision. So, anyone else? No? Brother Terry, will you close us in a word of prayer, sir? Dear Father, Lord, thank you for this day, Lord, and yes. thank you for the yes. lesson we just received. And hopefully, it it did some good, Lord. And Lord, yes. please give us the strength to go out and, and spread your light, Lord. And Lord, please be with this country, yes. especially in these troubling times. And Lord, also be with all the prayer requests, Lord, and have your healing hand and your comforting hand there, Lord. Yes. And please bless the song service and the sermon we're about to receive. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Absolutely. That's a good chapter. Mary was already asking me questions on the second Saturday. <laughs> 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 <laughs>